The following video may contain sensitive topics. The views and opinions of the presenter to these are plainly his own. Furthermore, any and all views and opinions of the presenter do not in any way reflect the views, opinions, statements, and advocacies of his personal contacts, his family, his affiliations, and his profession. While the presenter makes a commitment that all content is original, he is obliged to cite references or acknowledge resources mentioned or used in the production of this video. This disclaimer is also written in the description below. We now enter the last two weeks of Lent, which we traditionally call Passion Tide. This sub-season within Lent is characterized by preparations for Holy Week at the parish level. COVID-19 in Anus Horribilis 2020 made this absolutely impossible. And even now, it would be as well because Metro Manila and four surrounding provinces were locked down in a supposed bubble. And now, with the 500th anniversary of the first contact and the dawn of Christianity in the Philippines, the Catholic faith seemed to be questioned by critics and believers alike. Is it worth celebrating? Or more importantly, are we worthy of celebrating it? My name is Ian Rignon, an independent media practitioner, freelance writer, and aspiring content creator. And this is my Passion Tide address for the year 2021. For many, Anos Horribilis 2020 was the year that could be described as the year filled with the grief and sorrow of the Lord's passion. And it is rightfully so due to the circumstance that the pandemic restrictions began during the season of Lent. For many, Calvary was reimagined and continuously made real every single day outside the context of the Mass, of which many people, regardless of religiosity, are missing out in the past full year, and even this year. For many, the 2021 Lent season would be much like last year's, albeit more intense due to the vaccinations being done in other parts of the world. Anxiety is at an all-time high. Cases of mental illness doubled, if not quadrupled. Though many slugged the past year, without any incident, others were not very fortunate. It seems we were forced by the hand of God to take up our crosses, whether we like it or not. But if you ask me, the cross I carry now is something I deserved outrightly. It may not be as heavy or as light as others, but the one I have seems to outweigh any burden since I did deserve this due to my misgivings, shortcomings, and failures. If you ask me, my faith has never been challenged like this before, and trust me, it's ugly. It was 500 years ago since the cross was erected in these fair islands of ours. We have been and still are, the beacon of Christianity in the midst of a region of Hindus, Buddhists, Confucians, Muslims, and Pagans. Manila was a religious, political, and economic hub of Christendom in the East. But it all began when Magellan planted a cross in Cebu. The cross, once the dreaded tool of cruelty, is now regarded as as the most iconic symbol of the West, which unfortunately is being slowly cast down in a once religiously Christian Europe and Americas. More unfortunate still is the mindset modern Filipinos think about the Spaniards and Catholicism. While there were legitimate concerns about their occupation in this country, we all suppose the same for the Americans and the Japanese. But instead of sulking and stating the obvious, Filipinos should have the balls to one, grow up and abandon the Leyenda Negra, the black legend, 
and to be more courteous in treating the Spaniards as much as we have been amicable to the Americans and to a certain extent the Japanese. For all we know, Filipinos in Spain exist and they thrive there, which Rizal would be proud of. In Asia, the Philippine church has been steadfast with the faith given unto our people so far, at least culturally. One key example might be the response of Filipino Catholics when churches are advised to close down in this season of Holy Week or Passion Tide because of rising COVID-19 cases. But going back to the script, ironically, we, a nation of various tribes and tongues who were once pagan, are now the ones strengthening the faith of the European churches and filling their pews on Sundays. As the Pope implied last week, Filipino Catholics have quote-unquote smuggled the faith into the whole world. Thus, the cross was our way of influencing the world. Now, since we are talking about the cross, the crosses we are bearing at this point in time and how we smuggle them into the world, allow me to indulge you with how I see it in the lens of faith, no matter how corrupted or obscured it may have been. We all know that the cross was the ultimate instrument of torture, shame, and execution invented by the Romans. Before Christ transformed it into the sign of victory over death and sin, it was a dreaded concept to think about crucifixion. Being stripped fully naked with hands and feet nailed to an outstretched set of wooden poles with beams was the worst thing a human being could ever think of himself. The loincloth depicted in sacred art that covered the Lord's sensitive organs was implied by artists and historians alike as a mere compromise for modesty purposes. I for one could only imagine how those who were crucified would be tortured. With the lashes and the beatings the Lord received for all our sins, I could only imagine how humiliating it is to be stripped naked and flogged on all parts of one's body, and the whip would not spare the loins of the condemned. Besides that, we could also think of the other ways the Lord was tortured that the evangelists might have deliberately taken out of their Gospels due to its appalling descriptions. We also think of the crown of thorns on the Lord's head, a sign of further humiliation that we now believe was a crown of victory. And there is the cross. Many interpret how the Lord carried it and how heavy it might have been. Regardless, it was on that cross the Lamb of God took away the sin of the world. Historians think that only the beam of the cross was carried by the condemned, with the pole permanently fixed at a site outside the city's gates. At this point, we see the cross as two parts of the whole, the horizontal and the vertical. The horizontal portion of the cross describes the grief of suffering, the length of pain, the orientation of death. But we tend to forget what seems to be the significance of the vertical portion of the cross. The constancy of God in the passing of time, the lifting of virtue and the abasing of sin, the firmness of conviction, and the most important reflection of all on the vertical part of the cross is the upward quest for the heavens and divine joy. Intersecting both lines of the cross, we could interpret it as such. It is where the grief of sin and the joy of salvation meet. It is where in Jesus Christ 
we find mercy for our sins and hope in His redemption. In Christ, we realize the meaning between our comfort in our sorrow and our fulfillment in our longing. Therefore, behold the cross, for this is where grief and joy meet. Behold the cross, the tree of life, the sign of healing, the assurance of redemption. Behold the cross, the tree where the new Adam was the fruit himself. Behold the cross, the instrument of faith and throne of salvation. Behold the cross, the banner of hope for those nearing despair. Behold the cross, the paramount witness of divine charity to all nations. Behold the cross, for its beams spread the whole wide world over. Behold the cross, for its pole reaches the highest of heavens and the lowest realms of hell. Behold therefore the cross, for this is where God and man meet. Now for some announcements. So, I've just, uh, I would not be uploading anything on Holy Week. Uh, this might be the last, actually one of the last, because uh, na ako dito. Uh, I would also do a real talk, impromptu real talk on uh, what I mentioned earlier uh, sa uh, ad-libs ko sa Passion Tide Dress. Kasi, uh, I don't know, it's just uh, weird that a lot of people are having this absolute vitriol against the Catholic Church for 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 no other reason than uh, its existence and its uh, uh, its influence in the Philippines for 500 years. I understand that not all would not all are Catholics and all that, but then again, I might have to. Uh, I might have to react to it or uh, make my commentary about it nevertheless because it just seems to be uh, it just seems to be a bit askew uh, especially the ones being the ones being uh, implemented by the people upstairs but then again other than this address and that impromptu real talk baka nga magbigla ang live ko na lang whatever bahala na nevertheless this would be the last for uh, the last before holy week the last two content that i would be uh, sharing to you before holy week and then i will be back on easter maybe uh at the at the latter end of the easter octave but nevertheless it i would be back by easter hopefully by that time may na tayong lahat and i really hope that uh people would be able to uh go to mass this Easter dahil na miss out natin yun last year. So, I guess uh, I'm done with that portion of this recording. Again, I will not be uh, featuring my face and all that as part of this uh, part of this uh, very much uh, penitent season. So, that's the end of this recording and with all that said, this is Ian reminding you to make sure to pray this coming Holy Week. And at all times, in season and out of season, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, and see you in Easter. Ian out.